Right, you've joined me today on a beautiful winter's morning on Chesterfield Canal, just on the outskirts of Worksop. Now, I've only fished this a couple of times before. I, the last time I was here was with Matt Goffrey, and we had a lovely day's fishing. And it's just something different. I'm gonna catch a few chub, hopefully, and target some silvers. So, I've brought along with me some natural baits, some maggots and some casters. As you can see across there, we've got a lovely line of reeds, naturally holds cover for the fish. Chub just love this kind of area where there's cover and safety for them. So hopefully that's where we're going to catch the chub. Down the middle, I've got about four or five foot. So what we're going to do is we're going to feed a bloodworm and joke line. So I'm going to run through what ground baits I use, how I mix the ground bait. Morning. How I mix the ground bait how to separate the lame, the amount of joker I'm going to be putting in. It's only a narrow canal, so I'm going to be putting a load of blood and joker in. I'm just going to be feeding a small amount and hopefully catch a few silvers over that line. So let's get on with the ground bait and we'll show you, I'll show you how to mix that up. Right, let's talk about ground baits. Now I get this question asked an awful lot when it comes to what ground bait I use for targeting silvers on commercials and natural waters. But more importantly, on natural waters, I suppose I've been through, over the years, all different kinds of ground baits, and we all have, where we've tried different mixes, but we always end up on one mix, A, that we're confident with, but also it catches fish, and that's the most important thing. For me, wherever I go, if I'm targeting silvers, that's roach, perch, skimmers, chub, I rely upon this. Friends of them match black. It's absolutely awesome. In the natural and in the black. But let me explain to you about the ingredients. There's an awful lot of hemp seed in this. And when I was fishing a staining many years ago, I don't fish it as much now, but I learned a lot about this ground bait on a venue where you're going to catch loads of fish. And when I was feeding this with Blood Women Joker, I was catching fish and the actual fish were bringing up the ground bait, which shows that they absolutely love it. So it's not just an attractant, it's an actual fish holding food. And that makes you realise that actually it's not necessarily down to just what you put in your ground bait, it's the ground bait that you use that will hold the fish in your peg for longer, which means you're going to catch for longer. That's simply why I love it, knowing that wherever I go, silverfish love this mix. Now, as we all know, on a lot of canals at this time of the year, we're in the middle of January now. Luckily, this particular stretch is quite coloured, but on a lot of canals, it's quite clear. So you want to try and choose a dark mix, and that's why I like the black, simply because it acts as a camouflage for the fish, makes them feel safe, and it just works really well. Because there's a little bit of colour in this canal, I'm going to do a bit of a, a mixture of the two products. So the natural and the black, just, just to maybe lighten the mix off just a little bit, but it's still going to be quite a dark mix. So I'm going to show you how I do it, and then I'm going to show you and explain to you about the Blood Women and Joker. So let's do the ground bait first. That means while I'm doing my lean, separating my Joker, my ground bait's resting and absorbing all that moisture. Right, so quite simple really. I'm not going to mix a lot, simply because the canal's quite, nar uh, quite narrow and quite shallow, so I might only be feeding two or three balls and that'll be it. So, a pint of Friends of Dent Match Black and half a pint of Original. Give it a good shake around. And it's really important, especially when you're fishing for roach and you're using a roach mix, to use a whisk. That means it mixes your ground bait up a lot quicker, stops your hands getting mucky, but just makes the mix more even. So we're going to add a little bit of water at a time. bit more water a 
Now I want to do it just a little bit over wet because by the time it's rested and we've gone through the bloodworm and the joker, it'll have dried out a little bit and then that'll be just right really for us binding into balls. A little bit more water and that should be it really now. Right, let's have a look at this. It's always there's a good like, guideline when you've got the right consistency and that's not just with this ground bait, this is how I base all my consistency even when a method feeder on commercials or feeding ground bait down the margins on commercials. Once I've mixed my ground bait, if I can bind it into a nice ball like that, yet it breaks down to the original mix, then I'm more or less there. Then that allows me, just with a little bit of water afterwards, whether it's via an atomizer or just adding a little bit of water, to adjust the mix to how I want it to work before I start fishing with it. So what we're going to do now is just give it a nice riddle. The most important part of riddling is, especially at this time of the year, is to remove some of the bigger lumps. Especially when you're bloodworm fishing, we want the fish to be preoccupied with the joker in the ground bait which means obviously there's a lot more bigger particles in the ground bait. If we remove the bigger particles, they're not going to get filled up as quick. Obviously from what I've explained, I know that they're also feeding on the ground bait as well as the joker. So I just want to remove the bigger lumps. In the summertime on a canal, then I'll actually leave them in because that's going to attract the bigger fish into your peg. But at this time of the year, let's just make it a nice fine mix. See, normally what I'd do is I'd push that through, but today we're going to throw them away. Don't need them. There we go. Lovely, nice, fine mix now. So that's ready. So let's do the joker. So for a start, this joker is a Polish joker. And I've had it for quite a few weeks. I've had it in the bubbler at home just in case I've needed it as of yet on the commercials where I've been fishing and that, it's not been really cold enough for the joker to come into play. So obviously it's a good way of using it up today, coming on the canal, catching a few silvers hopefully. It's really easy to mix up and prepare ready for a day's fishing, whether you're in a match or pleasure fishing. So I just want to run through how you do it. I mean, when you buy your joker in from a tackle shop, this is how it comes but we're not going to use that much today. So it's always best to measure as well. So I'm going to take out a third of the pack, like so. Not a lot, but actually there is an awful lot of joker there. And I'm going to put it into a nice big container. Let's just pack this away. Now, this is really important. We're going to be using a bit of ground, we're going to be feeding it with ground bait. Always keep your joker separate to your ground bait, simply because it doesn't matter what ground bait is, there's a large content of salt in it and that will kill your joker. So if you want your joker to be a bit more active on the bottom, keep it separate and just prior to actually making the balls up, that's when you add your joker. So, we're going to add a bit of damp lean to it. Only a bit, just riddle off the lumps, straight into the joker, like so, and I'm going to give it a nice good shake. To separate all that joker. By just separating it gives you a good idea of how much joke you're actually adding to your ground bait. If it's still in clumps, you can actually end up feeding a bit too much a bit much too much joker than what you want. So there we go. That's it separated. It's a really, really cold morning. So usually, especially with Polish and normal joker, 
that would be moving about. But with Russian, with it being a bit smaller, a bit more dormant, it's a bit more of a dormant joker. And that's exactly what this is like at the moment. Until it warms up, that joker's there. But to be honest with you, you know, I've done a lot of underwater footage with joker. And to me, it's not the movement of the joker, it's the colour. It's a really glowing red. So whether it's dormant or not, the colour of the joker is what brings the fish into the swim. So, that, they're the two already. So when it comes to actually making my balls up, what I want to do is I want to measure the amount I'm going to be initially feeding. So I want to be feeding three balls at the start. So one ball, two ball, three ball, okay? Three balls of ground bait with one big ball of lean. Like so. And that's my initial feed. And then that, by having this separate, by just adding an atomizer to that mix, means I can form nice little small balls and add a little bit more joker to this if I wanted to make the ball actually richer, topping the swim up with lean and joker already prepared. As I say, just atomize it up and it's all ready to top your swim up if you need to. Obviously, if your, your bites die or the fish gets smaller, just adding a small ball in each joker really brings them bigger fish into your swim quickly. So, just give it a big mix up, like that. Now we're going to form the balls. So that's what we're going to be feeding today. As you can see, just in that ball alone, it's really rich in joker. So I'm going to, I'm going to start feeding my swim, get fishing, hopefully catch some fish now. having a great day's fishing to be honest with you. Fishing quite a, a simple day really. Just loose feeding a few casters across. If you look across you can see all those reeds. It's just a natural holding spot for the fish. Especially when the water goes clear. They just use that as cover. And I'm just, there's a little bit of flow. You've got a stream coming in on the river bank. It's coming down this side and then obviously the the rest of the flow is then going across on the other bank, very, very slow. So all I'm doing is I'm just loose feeding a few casters and I'm alternating between a single and a double caster on the hook and just running that float through. Now what I'm actually doing is I'm loose feeding some bait before I put my rig in. 
so I can A, concentrate on my float, but also by the time I've shipped out, those casters are falling down, I then flip my rig out, and my hook bait's kind of like catching up with them, if that makes sense. It's a very uneven bottom where I'm fishing, so for that reason, I'm just fishing off the bottom by about six inches. So I'm looking at catching my fish on the drop. For that reason, I've got a 4x12 Tubertini Delta, lovely float, I love these floats, especially for this style of fishing, with strung 11s. And this, that, that's allowing my hook bait just to fall slowly through the water. And I've had four chub and a perch up to now. I've just lost a big chub under, the, under this banking that's broke me. But nearly all my bites have come about there as my rig's just starting to straighten up, which shows that the half depth following that bait down. So that's why in this kind of situation, you just got to keep going, putting a bit of bait out all the time, not rushing. It's about just nicking the odd fish. If you try to plunder them and sit there with your pole, loose feeding over the top, you'll spook them. So I'm just making them feel a little bit safe just by sitting here, taking my time, enjoying the day. Lovely sunny day for this time of the year. Loose feeding a few casters like that. And hopefully, shipping out, laying the rig in, and clunking into a big rubber dub. So let's have a go. So I'm just gonna lay the rig out. Just hold it there. Just holding it whilst the rig is falling. As you can see, the rig's falling through the water. Once it starts falling and the rig starts straightening up, I'm then gonna start letting that float go. And as you can see, just very, very slowly, that float is inching through. Once the float becomes stationary, I wanna work that rig. I don't wanna just sit there because what you gotta remember is the, there we go. The bait is off the bottom. So you've constantly got to work that flow to entice That nearly took me in the reeds then. Oh it has. Oh it has. That's not good, is it? Is it out? Oh, he's out! <laughs> Just to entice those fish to take your hook bait. I'm only fishing an 010 up length with a small hook because these chub are wary. They're old fish. You start trying to fish heavy gear, big hooks, you're just going to get less bites. And as well as that, it just makes it a bit more sport. And that's most probably why I've lost that one down the edge, mostly because I've had three or four chub on one up length and it's just weakened my up length a bit. So I've just put a fresh up length on. It's not a big chub. It's actually the first one that's took me into any vegetation. And this is what happens as the shoal starts getting a bit wary they start running for cover when you hook them. And the first few that I've hooked, not a problem, just come straight out into the open water. Look at that. <sighs> what a beautiful fish. They're very old fish, these. So I'm gonna take a lot of care with them. You can see it's not a big chub, but it's only a small canal. Look how old that fish is. It's seen uh, many a day, that chub, I think right in the skin of the lip as well. Let's take the hook out. Like so. And slip them in the net. Beautiful.
Well, we've only fished for about three and a half hours with it being such a cold day, but I'd say it's one of the most enjoyable days fishing I've had, not just on a canal, but all winter. Absolutely brilliant. I've had eight chub, and as you can see, I've had some lovely roach on the bloodworm. I've had a couple on the castor where I've been fishing for the chub, but I've ended up with nearly 30 pound of fish. So what a fantastic day's fishing, and very simple as well. Single bloodworm and a single castor or double castor. And that's been it on a handful of bait. So get yourself out on a canal and give it a go. It's absolutely brilliant, loved it.